At the edge of the Sigma Star Cluster, the space is filled with the glow of green flashes. The silvery border station, Avansol 25, faces a multitude of black starships. Their origin is unknown, but their destructive fury is immense. Some of the frigates docked at the station open their airlocks and engage the mysterious enemy. Without success, Avansol 25 is under heavy fire. Our shield systems can't withstand the bombardment for more than a few minutes. Were you able to scan the ships? They don't match any design known to our databases. Send a message to High Command. No hyperspace connections. The remaining stations are reporting similar incidents. 40, 50, there are over 130. 1300 ships! Captain, you need to return to the Asha. We're about to blow up here. Bring the entire crew to my ship! That might give us a chance! Initiate station evacuation. I repeat, evacuation. All crew members of Avanzo 25 proceed immediately to the CSS Asha. Docking ramp 4. I repeat, proceed immediately to the CSS Asha. Docking ramp 4. See you on the bridge, Commander. I need to get back to my ship. If more of them come, there won't be much left. Good to have you back, Captain. The station's structural integrity will break in a few minutes. Are all crew members of Iron Soul 25 on board? We're still missing 50. How long can we wait? Not a second longer, sir. Then... Release the docking ramp. Sir. That was an order, Commander. Releasing docking ramp. Programming a course towards the daily. Maximum speed. Sir. There are no other ships to accommodate the crew. Just get us into hyperspace already! Powering up systems for the jump! In the light of the slowly rising sun over the planet Eorgard, the silver skyscrapers of the metropolis Dinas Arcasnia glisten. Thousands of gliders traverse the crowded paths between the towering buildings of the city. So, just to recap, Senator, you oppose the regulation of planetary financial institutions because you believe that a sole monopoly of the Imperial Central Bank could hinder the free development of the frontier worlds. And the agricultural worlds, of course, especially those that are not technologically advanced. We can never fully integrate smaller colonies that have chosen to maintain a lifestyle prior to the second industrial conversion into the central economic system of the Empire. They simply lack the economic power. I see, Senator. I understand. Well, that would be all. Thank you for the interview. I thank you, Miss Gwenthurt. My editorial team will be in touch with you in a few days. Perhaps we can get the article in the Saturday edition. That would be most gratifying. Have a nice day. <sighs> These senators are always such bone-dry bores. No wonder the officers make fun of their stiffness. Oh well. It's okay to Gwen and Hart. Part of the Yadari editorial system. I have a few questions. Hart, who are you? Don't reporters usually ask the questions? Norris Kammer, E.D. E.D.? Am I being shadowed by the intelligence agency now? <laughs> That'll be too much effort. So I intercepted you here to directly clarify the questions. Yeah, are we so direct? Is the badge real? I would advise against questioning that. My superiors wouldn't appreciate it. I assume so. Okay. What does an agent of the EET want? Oh, how exciting. Just a few questions. You interviewed Senator Rogart, is that right? That is correct. We would like a recording of the interview, ASAP. We... I... Is that new? What? Well, intercepting reporters directly. And personally, no less. It's called press censorship, Mr. Agent. It's called a precautionary measure, Miss Reporter. 
It'd be sufficient for you to send a copy to the following address, which will appear in your message folder shortly. What a tr- Ah, there it is. I will write about this. You can't stop me. I will report on what the EED is up to here. You couldn't care less, Miss Gwendolyn Hart. Have a nice day. The interview should arrive shortly. Miss Gwendolyn Hart was remarkably cooperative. I'm sure you played your unbeatable charm, E14. Hardly anyone can do without it. You must return to headquarters immediately. Sir, why the hurry? There has been an incident. An incident? This connection isn't secure. The High Command demands that we don't discuss this matter over long-range communication. I expect you in Sector 1 in 30 minutes. Are there any more reports of these attacks? Seven in total so far. Two stations have already been destroyed. Your ship was at Avantor 25. There aren't many survivors. None of the captains have been able to provide us with a comprehensive picture of the situation. We were there only briefly, but it seemed like an armada attacking the border station. We had no choice. If we had attempted to engage in combat, our ship would have been destroyed. How much data were you able to gather? We managed to scan some of the hostile forces. The Emperor has not made the attack public. We don't want to cause a panic. The strikes have been going on for ten hours now, and so far we have no confidential information. Any ship attempting to escape is intercepted within a matter of minutes. You are the only ones who have made it out of the danger zone. The only ones so far? We can't wait any longer and hope for more survivors. Fly to your guard as fast as possible. We need to organize our defense. Understood, Marshal. E1, sir. Why the urgency? There has been an enemy assault. Where? Have the Melvillanians attempted another invasion yet? No. At 2 a.m. your guardian time, an unknown armada destroyed the border station Avensol 25. Six more stations followed. We are facing an attack from an unknown enemy. How much information do we have? The High Command is frantically organizing the defense. They want to deploy an emergency fleet of three legions and try to stop the assault until we have more information. How does the High Command plan to involve the EED in this? We are already fully involved, E-14. But first, we need the approval of the Ministry of the Interior. We also need to prevent the media from catching wind of this. Section 1 is already working on it. Right. And what will be my role in this? According to the reports, a ship has survived the attacks on the Sigma border stations. The CSS Usher will arrive here in the capital world in four days. Make sure the captain doesn't blab right away. If the media starts broadcasting, it will be too late anyway. But we need someone to remind Captain Palan throughout the urgency of his silence by any means necessary. Hmm. Well, you're free reign. I like that. My command doesn't need to know about that. But the stability of the Star Empire depends on this small yet crucial variable. Then we should leave anything to chance. E-14. I'm not yet fully aware of the significance of these incidents. But from the whispers of the generals here, this is not just a raid by reckless pirates. Everything here is shrouded in secrecy. The threat is greater than anyone within the Star Empire could imagine. How do you... Intuition, E-14. I have been around long enough to sense when someone is amiss. I understand, E-1.
amidst the monumental buildings of Dina Sarkasnia, the Blue Tower, the headquarters of the Realm Guard High Command, rises like a sword's blade into the grey clouded sky. Rain pelts the extended platform on the 71st floor as Commander Palanther Farius's shuttle approaches. As the boarding hatch opens and the officer steps onto the platform, he is greeted by the sight of two members of the EED, one dressed in grey uniform and the other in red and black. Commander Palafor for us. That's correct. I didn't expect a welcoming committee. Do you really need two menacing bodyguards to confront me? As I say, expect the unexpected. Unfortunately, I regret to inform you that we're not here on positive occasion, Commander Palafor for us. Captain of the CSS Oisha. You're under arrest for neglecting your duty and violating your sacred oath as officer of the Star Navy. <laughs> what? What do you mean? Yes, sir. I demand an explanation right now! You're willing abandonment of 50 members of the Avon Salt 25 border station. The trial will take place tomorrow. Stay still, dammit! Please, Commander. You'd only make things harder for us, and you don't want to experience the unpleasant side of the AED. The border station was beyond saving! I only did everything to protect my crew! Please explain that to Marshal Palantor and the Committee of Marshal to Law. I'm only here for the dirty work. No one will get away with this! Where shall we take him, sir? The High Command has a nice prison wing in the tower. Take him there. Understood. are baseless, sir. We can prove that further evacuation of the station would have led to the destruction of our ship. We all saw it. There were thousands of ships. Is there any information about the Star Navy's counterattack? I only know that they are assembling a fleet in the Cato system. Nearly a hundred ships. Admiral Phineos is supposed to leave. A hundred ships will never be enough. Apparently the High Command thinks otherwise. They have not seen what we have seen. This counteroffense will cost us more losses than it will bring advantages. Then it must be called off. It's too late. They plan to launch a counter-strike tomorrow morning. <laughs> Who are they attacking? An unknown enemy with unknown strength and unknown technology? And unknown numbers. It's gonna be a suicide mission. The Lantern seems to be too ignorant to grasp that. He is scheduled to hold a press conference on the events at the Imperial Palace this afternoon. So information has been leaked? Apparently so. The planetary broadcasters of Allegius didn't quite have hired a news blackout. Now the High Command has to make a statement. Let me repeat this once again. There is no reason to be concerned about the attacks on the eastern border stations. It is suspected that some pirate groups have seized the opportunity to exploit our recent defeat at Rhodus, since the position got weakened. Is it possible that the Meltanians are behind these attacks? And if so, how does the Realm Guards plan to respond to this audacity? An attack by the Meltanians is ruled out. However, we do not yet have enough information to make clear statements in that regard. What statements then is the High Command willing to make? Can the Yard Wardian request an exclusive interview with you? No, they may not. But if, as you say, it was an attack by pirates, how is it possible that 31 stations were destroyed, and without any specific data on the attackers? Well, the attackers assaulted the stations with ships of unknown design. Nothing is certain yet, but it appears that they were too well organized and militarily structured to be a simple group of space pirates. Their tactics are too sophisticated, the command structure clearly organized, and they have a specific goal in mind. So we can assume that an organized military force is behind this? Perhaps an interstellar power? Is that the essence of your no. statement, Marshal? No, it is not. I'm simply saying that someone must be behind these attacks who is very knowledgeable about warfare. Someone who knew how our defenses are organized. Someone who knew how to identify and exploit our weaknesses. We are dealing with an adversary who seems to know how to conduct large-scale space warfare. On what?
what scale, then? Are you suggesting it's the Meltanians? No. We can assume that the Meltanian Alliance is only indirectly connected to these incidents. Indirectly? So there is some connection after all? I'm ending this press conference. Now. Marshal! Marshal! Palantir! I... we have more questions! Marshal! I can't help but suspect they're hiding something from all of us. The shadow of ignorance hangs over the Emperor. Chancellor Alfredich knew just as little as he did. How about his captain? Commander Palafor? I have a feeling that this commander has more useful information than our government does. Should be our duty to gather that information. It is unlikely that the Realm God will grant us access to him for the trial. They will intercept him after the hearing E14. Regardless of the verdict. What about the authorization from the High Command? We don't need any authorization, E14. Were there any changes made to the Blue Tower security protocols in the last two months? No. But just for the sake of political popularity, I should remind you once again of the urgency of this mission. In these times of uncertainty, trust is a precious commodity. In the semi-darkness of a green-lit bridge, two eyes stare at a flickering computer screen, the starlight shining through the windows illuminating the rest of the monumental fleet of black ships that are forming around the flagship. The cruisers have taken formation, my lord. As long as we haven't completely eliminated the defense lines behind the border stations, none of our officers can assure us that the Ahalutu won't lure us into a trap. So, is the path to their worlds clear? We detect movements of smaller flotillas near the planet Atele, but nothing that could indicate a planned counter-strike. Then we have no more time. Our Lord tells us that their advantage lies in their defensive strategies. We must weaken them whilst there is still time. Alfekta's fleet is still nearly 5,000 light years behind us. We cannot attack at full strength if we do it now. It is an order, Commander. Our schedule must be followed. The first, second, and third fleet will proceed westward immediately. And any world that appears to be of economic or military significance must be attacked on the spot. We cannot give them a chance to launch a coordinated counter-strike. As you command, my lord. Zargadrash. I wanted to inquire about your progress. My lord, their border stations have been overcome, and none of their fleets have organized themselves to a size that could in any way stop us. Hmm. Then proceed with the attack, Prince. Our main goal should be to cut off the eastern worlds from the rest of the Empire. We will wear them down piece by piece. This war will be about morale and endurance, so I wish for you to show no mercy. Of course not, my lord. 
give them a taste of the terror that awaits them in the coming months. The nation to tremble at the mere mention of your fleet, Prince. Oh, uh, what about the Asteri, my lord? Leave the order entirely to me. So, you deny, Commentor Pallander Farius, that you violated Regulation 4 of the Realm Guard's Warfare Directive? Yes, their station was beyond saving. If my ship and I had stayed there any longer, there would be nothing left of us but charred pieces of metal today. Didn't you inform Commentor Belgor that you would evacuate every member of his crew to the Asha? <laughs> yes, but... Didn't you release the docking ramps before the structural integrity of the Avansol 25 failed? Yes, that's correct. So, Commentor, what would still make us doubt your guilt? With all due respect, Marshal, but you cannot assess the situation. You weren't there. You haven't seen the terror we encountered that day. And what would that be? What attacked Avansol 25 and the other stations on the Sigma Star Cluster border were no pirates. It was an invasion fleet. Don't make a fool of yourself, Commentor. Such a fleet would never escape our sight. Impossible. It can only be an insignificant attack. There is no other possibility. Don't turn a blind eye to it, Marshal. An insignificant attack that wiped out a fully armed space station and several warships of the Space Navy? Fine. Then, this court now summons Leshent Commodore Valdir to testify. Aldir served as the first officer under Commodore Farius at the time of the events on that day. Leshent Commodore Valdir, do you swear that in the presence of this court, convened by the High Command of the Realm Guard, the eternal protector of the worlds and the honor of the Empire, you will speak only the truth? I swear. What is your stance on Commodore Farius' statement regarding the alleged invasion fleet that attacked Avansol 25? Marshal, I believe that Commander Farius, like all of us in this particular situation, was unable to properly assess the events there. Valdir, you cursed bastard. So you contradict the statement that Avansol 25 was attacked by a massive invasion fleet, as described by Commodore Farius. However, it is not within my jurisdiction to assess the mental state of the commander at that time. But you do not deny that the retreat from the station was initiated prematurely, resulting in the unnecessary loss of 52 Aryan soldiers' lives. I... no. I do not deny that. Commentor Farius, how do you respond to these accusations? What about the station's sensor data? I beg your pardon? The sensors recorded the number of ships. I'm certain of it. And the data from the border stations is continuously sent to Atelier for analysis. We have no information on that. <laughs> Why not? Because you don't have it. Or because they are meddling again. 
Commentor, I will not allow statements regarding the involvement of the EED in this matter. The intelligence agency has nothing to do with it. <laughs> you wouldn't want the general panic that an attack fleet would cause, would ya? After all, you still have to conceal the situation over there at Rodas. That's enough, Commentor Farius. Based on the overwhelming evidence and the testimony of your first officer, I, Marshal Palantir Thillian, hereby render the verdict of immediate demotion of your rank as Commentor of the Star Navy and a one-year imprisonment in the penal division of the Eagle Legion for cowardice in combat resulting in the unnecessary loss of our soldiers' lives. Marshal Palantur! What is it? I have an announcement from the High Command. Today at 4.03 p.m. Yargardian time, an unknown armada attacked the world of Peolia and Angalias and bombarded it for two hours. The number of casualties is yet unknown. What kind of fleet? The ships bore the same signature as those that attacked the Sigma border stations a few days ago. And how many lives has your ignorance cost now, Marshal? Is this true? No doubt, Marshal. <sighs> Under the newly emerged circumstances, I have no choice but to acquit comment or various of all charges. Commander? Commander! How do you feel about being acquitted of all charges? Um, uh, absolutely fantastic. What do you think? How does the High Command plan to deal with these attacks on the world of Peolia? I don't know. What do you mean? How quickly will the Star Navy be able to mobilize a fleet for a counter-strike? That also remains to be seen. Who is the enemy there? No comment. Commander, please wait! Commander! Commander! Looking out the window at the silver gleaming skyscrapers of Dina Sarkasnia, Marshal Palantur awaits Commander Farias in his office in the Blue Tower. The orange shimmer of a slowly setting sun gradually envelops the city, casting sparkling rays of light through the slits of the window blinds onto the room's carpeted floor. You wanted to see me, Marshal? That's correct, Commentor. This trial has been... unfavorable. Tell me something I don't know. These attacks have raised entirely new questions. Please, have a seat. It was the attack of an organized military force. That's what I've been saying from the beginning. And you were right. But the evidence was against you. The evidence? Or someone else. Coincidentally, someone whose name starts with E and ends with E-D. The data we received from Peolia speaks of a fleet of over 10,000 ships gathering on a wide front. 10,000? At least. And that's not all. Oh, really? Several weeks ago, some Stiavalors of the Twilight Legion discovered a camp of mercenaries fighting for the Gari family on a world of the Miltanian Alliance. But it turned out they were not mercenaries. They belonged to a species called Duyari that we were previously unaware of. We suspect that the ships belonging to the Eastern Armada were of this species. Humanoids? Yes. And they are bent on war. Why? Desire for conquest? A civilization that manages to surprise us to this extent should realize that it takes more than a suddenly appearing attack fleet to bring down the Star Empire. So, where do they come from then? It would seem that the Asteri have some sort of hand in this. The Asteri? How so? That's what I'd like to know, Commentor. The Order and the Emperor are keeping things covert. That's not important right now. What's important is that we stop this fleet before it can cause further destruction. We will assemble an armada for a counter-strike, and as compensation for this unnecessary accusation, would a promotion to captain be appropriate for you? 
It certainly would. You will assume command of the CSS Stealthor, a heavy cruiser of the Vientari class. You mean one of the new models in the Aldoran series? Exactly. Brand new. Probably still gleaming. You will join the fleet for the Counter-Strike, under the command of Admiral Phineos. I understand. When do we depart? Tonight. Your flotilla will gather in orbit around your guard at 1100 hours. From there you will fly together to Naliath. You will join the rest of the fleet. Then, I better get ready, Marshal. And one more thing, Captain. Uh, yes, Marshal? Find yourself a new first officer. The Shent Commentor Valdir doesn't seem to be a particularly reliable soldier. You can bet on that, sir. Good evening, sir. Are you ready to order? I can recommend the dish of the day, Eastern-style oysters in garlic sauce. It's a specialty of our house. No, I don't like seafood. For now, we'll have the scarano, the sweet one. And then the fish platter, number three. The one with the vintage 4017. Excellent choice, sir. May I ask what happened to your delightful companion from Friday evening? Unfortunately, she couldn't make it tonight. <laughs> Business affairs. I see. Please send my regards. Of course. Well, where are you? There one day. Easily recognizable by the silver stripe on the aim and collar of his shirt. Why do you want to make it so easy for me? The round guard officers are always still my style. Hey, wash your hands. What? <laughs> Lieutenant Commander of Adair, I assume. What the fuck do you want from me? Just a little chat. I don't see why. <laughs> I do. Why do you rely on today's trial against Commander for us? What? How do you know? <laughs> said what I saw, man! Yes, and that was the only thing. False testimonies don't align with the proper behaviour of a round guard officer. You wanted it that way! What? What do we want? The EED wanted me to tell that, but didn't want everyone to panic. No, the EED certainly didn't want that. Please, stop it! Stop it! Before the trial, one of your agents came to me. He told me to keep my mouth shut about, about what I saw. Then he wasn't from the E.D. What? Uh, <laughs> I, I swear he was one of you! What did he look like? I, I don't know. Tall, grey hair, looked a bit oddly wrinkled. You said he was one of us? Yes, yes. If you ask me, you should reconsider your disguise from the moment, people. Uh, <laughs> I that too. Very well, by there. Oh my! What was happening in there? Please take care of your guest. He's a bit shocked. Bribery. The Lieutenant Commander. Quite evidently. He didn't seem very resistant to me. In fact, he was all too willing to spill everything. But he knew I belonged to the EED, so it wasn't his first encounter. Probably his first encounter with a real Avabir agent, though. It was also unlikely that the Ministry of Interior ensued such an order. I would know, E14. Do you know what Valdir was doing there? Same things Railguard officers always do on shore leave. Stuffing their bellies, getting drunk, and pleasing the local ladies. Anything else? 
No notable activities otherwise. Seems he was only deceived once by whoever that was. Fake agents pretending to be ED officials. Then we must take action. Is it the one already working on the matter? We borrow the surveillance cameras from the Blue Tower. You'll be responsible for this operation. Someone who knows our structures. Someone who knows perfectly well how to outsmart a security system. Meltalani intelligence would be a possibility. Not entirely unlikely, but considering the current circumstances within the Alliance, they are hardly able to establish an organized intelligence network. It wouldn't fit the current situation. It's much more likely that this is connected to the attacks on the Eastern Worlds. An intelligence agency associated with a new fleet? Yes. That would be the only possibility at the moment. How could these facts be related? If we believe the reports sent by the border stations, then this enemy is indeed a strictly organized military force. And this military force cannot operate alone. They must have an empire behind them. So we know no galactic power to us. Yes, a major power that has eluded our sight for millennia. Hard to believe. But not impossible. Then we're all in huge danger here. The signs are clear. Soon we'll have no more doubts, E14. The enemy we're facing here doesn't derive their power from temporary formations of pirate ships. Behind them stands a monumental war industry, a network of intelligence services and spies, perhaps even larger than our own. That remains to be seen. So what needs to be done now? You will go to the Senate and investigate their activities. Try to gather as much information as possible about these fake agents. The faster we apprehend them, the sooner we'll uncover this mystery. Understood, one. Captain Palathor, Lieutenant Wittgen Arn, reporting for duty. Lieutenant, you are in charge of my fighter squadrons? Yes, Captain. Captain, if I may ask a question. Mm-hmm. You may. Is it true that we're setting out to confront this new enemy? That's correct. And I hope Admiral Phineas knows what awaits us. Engage the ship into hyperspace! Set a course for Naliath OL-12. So, how do you like the new ship, Captain? More spacious than the last one, Admiral. Don't forget that from now on, you're stepping onto a stage with a bit more firepower. 
I will take good care of the Star Navy's new toys. You now represent the Star Empire in a significantly larger extent. As you may have noticed, the Star Navy is very fond of their new toys and their integrity. I'm not sure if we can guarantee that in the current situation. We'll find out soon enough. Our fleet will arrive at the Atelier system in an hour. Why precisely there? Because the sensors between Pololia and the Aether are currently transmitting sensor data about the unknown fleet to us. The probability of a major attack is more than high. How large? We estimate the strength between 2,500 and 3,000 ships. So we are outnumbered 2 to 1. Numerically, yes. We hardly know anything about the exact strength of their ships. Based on what I observed at Avansol 25, I don't believe that their ships are significantly superior to ours. Well, if Marshal Planther wasn't so stubborn, we would have had a few more squadrons with us now. He underestimates the danger. And what about you? <laughs> Not anymore. You mentioned observations at Avansol 25. Do you have any information for me? Hmm, perhaps. Well, now would be the best time to spill the beans. I'm transmitting holographic recordings of the formation of these Duyari at Avansol 25 and the bombardment of Peolia. What about it? Pay attention to the distribution of individual ship types. As you can see, they concentrate cruisers and battleships in the center, while the lighter units remain on the periphery. We could exploit that. Divide our formation into five equal subformations while we attack the edges of their formation. This way, we can destroy parts of the firepower without sustaining heavy losses ourselves. That could work. Depending on how quickly the enemy reacts, if they even appear in this formation here. I find that quite likely. They attack Peolia in exactly this manner, and they have no reason to believe that they will encounter significantly greater resistance at Atalia. Artelli lies before the fleet like a giant snowball, with thousands of shimmering dots forming a spear formation, with Admiral Phineos's flagship at the forefront. This is Admiral Phineos to Eagle Legion speaking. The fleet has reached the Atelli system. We have not detected any enemy presence yet. However, don't feel too secure. Attached to this message, you'll receive a maneuver order that divides the fleet into five sub-formations. Well, where are you? Last time, you didn't take this long. You surprised me at Avanzo. This time, I will make it so easy for you. Captain, the sensors are detecting a multitude of incoming ships from hyperspace. How many? Over 3,000. Exactly in the formation I expected you. Now, let's finish you off. I will take command of Formation Alpha. Commodore Rawson is... Commodore Rawson, take command of Formation Beta. Captain Telos... Formation Gamma, Captain Planther, Formation Delta, and Commodore Yison, Formation Epsilon. Has the countless black-green dots emerged from hyperspace, 
Silence falls upon the bridge of every starship. Tron of Airguard? Admiral Finos to the entire fleet. Prepare for combat. Concentrate all your attacks on the edges of the enemy formation. Palanther to Formation Delta. Prepare for engagement. Chancellor Alfrich, it's a pleasure to meet you. What? How did you get in here? Well, the door is open and I... I'll call the guards. They won't be much help to you, Chancellor. Who are you? What do you want? You know exactly who sent me. Number 14, Your Excellency. E.E.D.? Then I command you to explain immediately what you're doing here. Unfortunately, in times of war, the Supreme Command of the Realm Guard and the E.E.D. falls to the Emperor. My apologies, Chancellor. I hope you don't mind if I take a seat. But we're not in times of war, Agent. Uh, since Admiral Flynnos' fleet attacked the Diari forces at Atili, we are. I... we... we still don't have a report on the progress of the battle. That will change very soon. Is this really? Fine. What do you want from me? And don't touch my Trilli! Fake agents are lurking around the Dinis Arcanasia. I'm searching for them. That's impossible. The E.D. doesn't think so. It tried to suppress reports about the attacks from the new species. They had connections to them. But now... What do you mean? I... we... What do you think? The Australia was the ones hiding something this time. And the Emperor. And you're his closest confidant. What do the Australian and Emperor Liminor know that we don't? What's the deal with these Gerardi attacks? Who leads them? And where do these agents come from? The Asteri have, in a certain way, something to do with it, that's true. Chancellor, the Star Empire's security depends on this information. We get it now, or later. Now will be a much better time, though. Unfortunately, it's much more than that, Agent. It has something to do with Arthelanian with Loin, right? The Astari who went on a mission to the Mythalanian Civil War a few months ago. To find whom? That legend... A myth. I'm not interested in the details. Not their magic. Not their strange sorcery. Or not the petty distributes among themselves. That's the Order's business. I cannot provide any information about it. And you can't force me. Don't further damage the reputation of the EED, E14. I have enough political power to inflict significant damage on the intelligence agency. Don't forget that. Oh, please, Chancellor. The Senate is even more divided than ever. They couldn't even agree on whether or not we should lead an attack on the Moranian back then, or not. I've rarely such seen an inefficient political casting, and you can't even keep this bunch of quarrelsome hyenas together. All the senators care about is how they appear on the media, to gain the greatest admiration from their masses. And in their ignorance, they haven't even noticed that the enemy agents are right under their noses. What do you want from me now? Chancellor. You know that if this were to come out, there would be an impeachment proceeding. Spies in your own government. That's not a good PR. That's outrageous. The EED will not interfere in this government. We expect the official authorization by midnight. Otherwise, tomorrow the Yawadari will publish some very unpleasant things about the disclosed spies in the government. Under Chancellor Alfred Lavar. They would be delighted to put their boot in the face of a co-exponentialist. Good day.
Once again, the stellar navy's starships pass by the enemy fleet. Blue, red and green beams whip through space in the orbit of Atelli. Explosions light up in the formation of the Duyari ships, indicating the gradual wearing down of their fleet. Flyback number two successful. 15 enemy frigates and 17 destroyers eliminated. Own losses? Two destroyers and two frigates slightly damaged. Moderate to heavy damage on two more destroyers. Subformation Epsilon also has 32 takedowns. Alpha even has 36. If this pace keeps up, we'll have them soon. It looks like the DR is sending troop transports towards the surface. Admiral Finos to all. Subformation's within range. Deploy ground troops and air support. We're close enough, sir. Captain Nord Palanther to all ships of Subformation Delta. Immediately deploy ground troops and air support. It seems that the enemy forces are heading towards the capital, Surya. Who would have thought? Captain to Lieutenant Commander Witkin. Launch fighter squadrons to support the ground units. The enemy is heading towards the planet's capital. Make sure they don't land. We'll transmit the data of the flight route. Lieutenant Witkin to Caesar Stafford. Are there any Colonia militia left down there, or are we on our own? The guys from the Atelier garrison will support you. But don't expect too much from the quality of the pilots. Coordinate with the relevant fighter unit. Call sign Thongor. Understood. We'll do our best. Dragon lead to Thongor. Please respond. Dragon lead. This is Thongor 2. Thunga 2? Oh, no. Thunga lead. Our squadron leader got hit. I have command now. What's the situation? Enemy fighters are heading towards the city of Zildan. We're intercepting. The 9th and 10th tank battalions are marching with two stellar units to defend the city. We need to ensure they don't get enough surprise from above. Understood. Drag lead to squadron. Break off and head northeast. We have at least a hundred fighters on the coast of the city. We need a few more minutes. But we don't have them. Drag lead to the squadron. Lure them out of the formation and engage them in individual combat. Stay away from their center. Mind buddy. Just in time. There should be no shortage of targets. Be careful. What's on your tail? That was close. Closer than I. I got it. Engine one is gone. One is still functioning. Editor-in-Chief was very pleased with my work. Absolutely, why not? Ah, oh, certainly. But I have to hang up now. My train leaves in ten minutes. It's Gwen and Hart. Ah, you're again. Hey, aren't you that Mr. Agent? Yeah, I've always been like that. Could I know your real name this time if you're going to accost me so unabashedly on the street? Changes every other day anyway. <laughs> ah, I see. Spy stuff. What can I do for you? I could write an article about the EED and... No, I have a task for you. A task? What? From you? You want to give me a task? Let's go in more of a side job. Side gig to be your main activity. I... I don't know what to say. A simple yes or no will do. How well are your connections to the Senate? P pretty good. Excellent. You applied for an exclusive filming rights for a documentary about the Imperial Senate. We'll ensure that you get approved. Uh, okay... And then? And then, then you'll interview some senators. They will stay close to you. You'll inform us about every inconsistency. Every little detail. 
including the private lives of these politicians. I... Uh, I'm a journalist, not a spy. Oh. Will 10,000 crony per month deposited into your account be sufficient as a starting of it? Ten... Ten to... I... Uh... All right, let's say 15,000 and you'll also share with us the dearest details of these esteemed senators' private lives. We have an agreement. Well, that's all tempting and... Perfect. If you send out the application over the weekend, we'll have it approved by Monday. Have a nice day, Miss Gwendolyn Hart. Wait! Hey! Mr. Agent! Mr. Agent! Ships. Well, if this continues, there won't be enough left to maintain the blockade around the planet. I have witnessed it myself, Commander. As long as their smaller groups keep attacking our flanks, we are losing far too many ships. And what about the troops on the ground? They were able to land near their capital city in a mountain range, and are marching south now. Our fighters have air superiority. It shouldn't take long for this world to fall. Do not underestimate their soldiers. Zargatros has told me enough about them to show that we should never treat them too lightly. Our flagship has been hit! That's enough! Order the fleet to redistribute into smaller squadrons. We'll break formation and take away their advantage. Understood, my lord. Guns 5 and 7 offline. Shields at 70%. So they managed to do more than just scratch us after all. Execute another attack maneuver. Formation Epsilon has already completed our attack. Losses? A hundred ships so far. It's within acceptable limits. What are the Duyari doing? Hold on. They... They're breaking formation! Admiral Finos to the entire fleet. The enemy's breaking the formation. Abort the attack. I repeat. Abort the attack! They have recognized our advantage. And now, they're using it against us. The turn line the Elsmer got hit! We are under fire from four cruises. Plasma batteries, three and four offline. Starboard shields at 40%, port shields at 50%. Pilot, quite a spectacle up there in the sky. Are you injured? Uh, doesn't seem like it. Very good, because our medic took a plasma blast to the skull five minutes ago. Get him out of here. You have to come with us, Lieutenant Commander. The Yari troops are advancing on the city of Sildren from the north. Your squadron was able to prevent the aerial assault on us, but the enemy has a lot of soldiers down here. Our artillery managed to slow down their advance, but only for a few hours. What about the capital city? As far as we know, General Farian and his troops can hold the city. Massive tank support at this point allows us to stop the enemy kilometers in advance. If they can't break through our formations in a wide front, we have a good chance of winning this. Take this. The DG-3 won't hurt down here. So, they're breaking through. And I was hoping we had a little more time. Alright guys, take position in the houses on the outskirts of the city! Go, go, go! 
I've never seen soldiers fight like this before. There are completely deranged ones just running into our fire. And then, there are others who cunningly outsmart our defenses. I need to get back to my squadron. Not possible, pilot. Unless you can quickly find a fighter around here somewhere. Surprise! We don't have one down here. Sinessa and Sia have been destroyed. Delta Formation has lost most of their ships. Fuck. Damage report of the Stealthor. We've lost two more canyons. Bow shields at 10%. Redirect starboard shields towards them. They've surrounded us. We're under attack from all sides. Transmission from Miral Phineas. Admiral Phoenix to the entire fleet. Alpha and Beta Formations. Withdraw from the battle immediately. And then... <laughs> Captain Orfarias to Delta Formations. We are withdrawing from the battle and following Phineas' formation. Delta, Gamma, Epsilon, follow us. Try to keep out of the crossfire. Negative, Captain. There are nearly 500 enemy ships between us and the Admiral. Do we have a chance to fight our way through? Impossible. They blow us into pieces. There are only 58 ships left in our formation, Captain. What options do we have? On the other side, there are only about 20 ships blocking our path. Sir, we could make it through there, but then we'd be leaving our fleet behind. They'll most likely have to leave us behind. Connect me to Admiral Phineas. <laughs> Looks like you won't be joining us, Captain. Er. I don't know if the Diari will allow you to return to us that easily. Don't worry about us, Admiral. Get the rest of the fleet to safety. I'm sending over some data you might need later. We'll try to buy you some time. Good luck, Captain. In the snow-covered city of Sildan on Ateli, thousands of projectiles and energy beams whip through the storm. The shots from the advancing Duyari are answered by explosive salvos from the Stiavaloras. Corpses litter the streets, and the blood of the fallen bodies has long frozen into ice. Lechent Commandor Vidkin has taken refuge with the Stiavalora unit, led by Commander Idar, in one of the semi-ruined houses, where they now await reinforcements. These are the days when one is glad to wake up! I can't stay here! I need to get back to the fleet! Pilot, what was your name? Vitka! As you can see, 
We're currently facing difficulties advancing through seven enemy battalions. Sir, they're bringing in armored vehicles through the main road towards the city. How about artillery? Occupied elsewhere. Damn it! Duck pilot! I'm as low as I can go! Sir, if we stick to defending against infantry attacks, we can hold out here for a few hours. But if they send tanks, we'll have to shut up shop. There they are! Return fire! We won't stay here, Commander. We can hold the capital, but it seems Sildon holds great strategic importance for them. Finally! We get to see those bastards up close! Ugly little pricks, just as I thought! Machine gun! Right, pilot. You can't stay here. Oh, really? Commander, we have a new order from General Ferion. <laughs> and what is it? The capital needs all available troops. We're to attempt a breakout and immediately head northwest. If we can reach a Nitus galley at the edge of the city, we can be at Seria before dusk. Very well. Third company, prepare for a breakout. You're ready, guys. How much can we rely on your flight? At the moment, apparently as much as a wounded dove on our brushy. Great! Alright, boys, let's move out! Sir, there! That's more like it! Heads down, that's his gal's incoming! Direct the fire at the damn scout tanks! Excellent! Everyone, inside! We have cover fire! <coughs> the shit! Ivar! Hurry up now! I want to get back at my fighter. It's a little dirtier down here than fucking above the clouds all day, isn't it? One of the pilots got hit. This is your chance. Uh, what was your name again? Vitkin! Well, alright. I've never flown one of these things before. There's the first time for everything. The guys will get us to the capital now. There's a battle to be fought there! We'll meet again! I don't think this war will be over so soon! Unfortunately, I have to agree with you on that! Okay, 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 I can do this. We learn all this at the Academy Engines on vertical takeoff and... Oh yeah, now 5% thrust, lining engines for horizontal flight, and yes, yes, 20% thrust. And now comes the exciting part.
Lunia? Clash and course vectors of the enemy ships cutting off our path. 21. Two battleships, four cruisers. The rest are for good 10 destroyers. Okay, that means it's balanced in terms of battleships and the clear advantage against the others. We should be able to handle it. The two battleships and the cruisers are focusing their fire on the Valia. Status of the Valia? Heavily damaged. It won't hold up for much longer. The Valia has been destroyed. <sighs> so much for the balance of battleships. For fuck's sake. Our formation has lost six more ships. Divert all power to the engines. Get us out of here. Enemy ships behind us, sir. An NG-423 is launching from the planet's surface and is transmitting Lieutenant Commander Vitkin's identification code. We can't slow down anymore. Either he boards at our current speed or he stays here. Our current speed is too high to initiate a protocol-compliant docking procedure. Then it won't be protocol-compliant. Establish a connection with the Lieutenant Commander. It would be nice if you could slow down a bit, sir! Have you happened to notice the 800 Doyari ships following us? I might be able to make it with an ISR 171 at this speed, but not with an Nitrous Gully. I see what I can do. Stand by. Luya, can't we at least decelerate just a tiny bit? Maybe just a tiny bit, but we have to push the engines beyond the recommended limit. Then do it. Lieutenant Commander, we are slowing down a bit for you, but make it quick. Thanks, I'll do my best! Half around the planet? It's far enough for me right now. Fail me? Yes? Yes? Legend Commander, this isn't fit! It will never fit! It fits! It fits! Sir, he made it. It did fit. Very well. Now get us out of here. Prepare to jump hyperspace. Do we have a course? Peolia, there isn't much left there. I don't think they'll be coming back. Jumping in three, two, one. Stay calm. Mr. Agent? Mr. Agent? You can call huh? me Garth. Let's skip the formalities. Garth, huh? Phew, I thought you wouldn't show up here today. That's not something to consider. I mean, all this secrecy, it's driving me crazy. But the documentary is going well so far. Well, we haven't shot much yet, and we don't even know what the script is supposed to be like, but I've managed to find out something so far. Yeah, show me. Okay, so, um, we have Senator Aris here. He's, well, he's involved with the Secretary from the Ministry of Economics, and then we have Senator Wingert. He's quite a scoundrel who- I don't want to gossip about any sex scandals in the Senate. I want incriminating information about certain senators who are supporting a hostile intelligence agency within our ranks. Um, a hostile intelligence agency? Now you're scaring me. You think I was here to just pass the time? Well, no, but... <sighs> okay. When I interviewed this senator, Senator Lagard... I'm listening. I don't know. I found him peculiar. I had a feeling, and he also talked about things, you know? No, I don't know. So, I have the interview here. They really insisted on not having it in digital format. He became more talkative over time, and then he mentioned that he was considering whether diplomacy might be the best way to deal with this new enemy, the Duyari. He even wanted to conduct negotiations himself if necessary. Is that it? Is that suspicious already? You tell me. Well, honestly, I found him peculiar. I wouldn't have met him in a lonely alley in the middle of the night like I did with you. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Very funny, Miss Gwendolyn Here, these are all my notes, including from the interviews. You can go through everything. I'll surely have more in the coming days. Well, that, this looks promising. I'll have a talk with Senator Lagart. Do you have access to the Senate? We'll gain access to his private residence. Oh, how exciting. These documents, Miss Gwendolyn Hart. will take me a big step forward. They'll take all of us a big step forward. Oh, please, call me Wicca. Let's skip the formalities. I hope the work continues at this place, Wicca. Don't worry, um, Garth. Tomorrow, I'm conducting an interview with Marshal Pellinter. He wants to personally inform me about the latest war events. So the Yawadari is taking over the frontline reports. Interesting. Yes, but only in this particular case. Lone Aura would do it otherwise. They still do, but we have good contacts with the High Command. That's good to hear. Um, well, if you want, we could take a little walk. I live in Sayadana, just three streets away from here, and... Thanks. Tempting offer. Maybe another time. All right, then. But next time... Where are you? Mr. Agent? Mr. Agent? Arrived in the payola system. Sensor data is coming in. Enemy presence? None, sir. Damage report on our ships? 51 made it through, including one battleship, the Cartanor, and 14 cruisers. However, the former is heavily damaged. What about the surfers of Peolia? What have our new friends wrought? 30% of the cities have been destroyed. 60 million casualties. They will pay for this. Do you remember the data Admiral Fenius sent me during the battle? It contained detailed information about some fleet posts in the sector. One of them is located here, near Peolia. And if I find there what should be according to the inventory, then we should be able to get the fleet back in shape fairly quickly. So you believe... you believe that this is not just a temporary conflict? I oh, know how much we insisted in the past days and weeks to downplay these events unfolding in Angalius. But by now, we are absolutely certain. And about what? What are you certain of? That this is a war. A new war. A war unlike any we have experienced in centuries. So... you mean this is official now? Can I... Include that in the new edition? Forget about your damn edition for a moment. We are standing at the beginning of a conflict that threatens the lives of 23 billion of our people. An unknown enemy has emerged from the darkness of the galaxy. We know very little about them, and they are attacking our worlds. Admiral Phineos has reported a defeat of his fleet at Atelli. I know. I have two cousins on Atelli. We don't know much. But so far, the Ardus forces have managed to hold the cities. But then this is a real war. Like, a proper, genuine war. Now you have something to write, don't you? I only demand one thing. That everything I have shared with you in these interviews about the upcoming events is reported absolutely truthfully, and in my exact words. A new enemy, a new day, a new war. You have my word, Marshal.